Okay, right, welcome back to part three. Let's uh, carry on with this where I left off. So we were just going to um, essentially put this other carbon brush in on the other side, which I should have done before I put it all back together again. So we'll take the screw out. Take off the retainer, put the other brush back in. Like so. And then we need to get the spring down. Make sure the yellow terminal's underneath and then screw it back in. Like so. There we go. Now we can uh, put it back together again. Again, making sure that that terminal block has to go one into there and one lug into there before you close that back together again. Okay, disaster averted. It's done. So we can put our motor up again now. You see how easy it is just to make a silly little mistake like that and then you literally you've got to like take all the motor apart again to to rectify it. So once again we're just gonna do the Screw up there, that's great. And then the rear one. So we put that back through. Get our nut back on the other side. And tighten it up. So essentially that's the uh, the motor done. So we're going to just now literally put the fan back on and the fan case seal. That goes around the outside. Where's the fan gone? There we go. So the fan we want the spacer on first, the uh, the bush, sorry, and then we want the spacer washer, the other spacer washer. Then the fan will push on, and then we'll put the pulley back on, and we we'll tighten that in a reverse thread. It doesn't have to be really, really, really tight, but just tight enough. Where's my mole grips gone? There we go. So that's that's that. Now we need to put the process of putting it back inside the machine. So, we'll just get the, uh, the housing back. And we can slide our motor back into the housing making sure that doesn't drop off in the process. That's it. Switch back into its hole. Um, no, actually what we need to do before we do that actually is to put the two screws into the holes in the bottom of the motor first, so one into there and one into the other side, into there, otherwise they're a pig to try and get back in. Right, so once again lower it down, and then that's dropped off again. Well done Hoover for making such a ridiculously 
pain in the arse motor to get in. Service engineers must have loved doing these. There we go. There you got it. So let's put one of the top screws in first just to hold it steady. Don't tighten it all the way though. Now I'll get my extension uh, screwdriver in to tighten up the bottom screw. And the one on the other side, which is the most difficult one. because there's very, 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 very restricted room down this side of this case to get to it. But we've got it anyway, here we go. That's that. Uh, one in the top here, in this corner. and then one in this corner and then we're fully tightened up the one down in the bottom that's it, ok um, where are the screws now for that switch so we're going to put the switch here, back in its housing those two are the screws for that and if they're not I shall soon find out it's taking me longer because I haven't got my electric screwdriver anymore it's broken well it hasn't it's just the battery isn't much good in it anymore and, and uh, it doesn't really do the, the screws up tight enough that and that's working we're not putting the suppressor back in that's being trashed so we don't need any of the uh, associated wiring which is that there which attached to the suppressor that goes to the back of the motor that doesn't need to go back on because obviously we're not um, using the suppressor anymore so that can all be junked okay now we need to rewire our wiring back into it, so I shall just turn it round the other way. We'll get the um, handle bail back in first. So reposition that in. Put the two screws in, one, two, there we go, one, two screws for the handle bail holder and then we'll put the wheel assembly back on making sure that our spring is seated onto the underside of that okie dokie
no, that's not right. The wheels are too far across. You just make sure that the wheels are centralised into these housings here on the hood. That's better. Now we can tighten it down. That's it. Lovely. Now I'm put the uh, handle bale back in. I'm not seeing any of this on the camera, I do apologise about that. What I'm essentially doing at the moment is uh, sticking the handle bale back into the, um, the machine there. Make sure it's fully focused out. Yes, that's better. There we go. So we're going to put the handle bale in, then we're going to put this little um, this, the, the, um, the foot pedal on, onto there with that screw. And then we're going to feed the cable back through and we're going to wire it onto the motor. That's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to finish uh, tightening the handle bail back up. If I can find the screw for that, which is that one. Put the um, screw through. Is that seeing on the camera? Mm, just about. I tell you what, it is so awkward to try and film when you're working on these things. If you haven't got the right sort of tripods and the right sort of equipment, it's it's very difficult. And really, I, I should have put that in first, and I'm going to have to just slacken that off now and put that in. Take the screw back out again, slide the handle back out slightly, enough just to be able to get that cable holder back in that slot there. And then we can slide the handle bail back into the hole again and line the hole up for the screw to go back through. And then the nuts will go back in like that. There we go. We don't really want to over tighten this because all it will do is just crush the handle bail. You're just tightening it into rubber basically, so just tight enough will do. Then we're going to put the cable back through the hole, the grommet. And push that in. Right, now we can turn it back round again. Hook the bag back on the hook. Right, so that needs to just go around that side of the wheel, axle. And I'm going to just put the um, foot switch back on as well. Again, the foot switch goes on there. Can we say that on the camera? Yeah, you can, just about. So we're just going to mount that back on here and put the screw in. I really do need to make sure I don't drop this screw from here because it'll go straight under the washing machine if I do. I'm only doing it in this position so it captures it on the camera. Okay, tighten that up. 
right, so that's our foot switch back on. Pedal. Right, now I'm going to uh, put the cable back through. Can we see that on the camera? Let's see if I can zoom in on that now. I'm going to be putting that back through this hole in the motor here. And then I'm going to remove my two screws, which I put back in earlier so I wouldn't lose them. I've got one, two for me live and neutral. Okay, now. Oh, bugger it. This is conspiring against me today, this one is. That is now snapped off from that terminal block, so I'm going to have to re-strip that wire and re-put that through in the terminal. This wouldn't normally be on here, but this is the, the modification I made to it earlier on, and uh, me waggling the wires back constantly has uh, snapped that off. Don't you just love old machines? Where's my pliers? There we go. What I'm also going to have to do is to, um, looks like, the, now that's that's okay, that one is. Yeah. So that can go back inside there. This is basically the wiring that I put in to bypass the, um, the suppressor. Because it's a little bit more tricky to bypass the suppressor on a Junior. With them being four terminals. Right, now... So that's my neutral, and that's my live, because that live goes directly to the switch. That's the wire coming back from the switch into here, and that goes round into the motor. That's correct. How much time have I got left? 11 minutes. Uh, okay. When you're up against the clock as well, it's uh, it's a real pain. Because this camera, as I say, it only records for 30 minutes at a time and my me, me memory card's getting full now as well. And it can be, when you feel like you're rushing, you tend to make more mistakes. So Hoover looks, I know how you feel now, you know, when you uh, when you ball something up and have to go back and do it again. <laughs> but it's a lot of work, isn't it, just like to lubricate the uh, bearings on the motor. So there's the two cables back in. And I need to strip that black wire down as well because that's, uh, that's starting to fray on there and it's not a very good connection so I need to re-strip that. Yeah, there's not a lot of... Mm. Let's chop that off. This is basically the wire that goes from the neutral side um, of the carbon brush. It's going to go onto the neutral terminal of the uh, cable. Again, it's what something I had to do when I removed the suppressor. Because otherwise that would have gone to the suppressor. If I remember rightly. And it's a devil to try and strip these wires as well. That's it, we got it. Okay. Make that into a little circle. And we can just push it up round behind that screw. Under the washer. Oh, 
Oh, the juniors are so fiddly. That's better. That's a much better terminal connection now. Let me just suck that bit of um, detritus out of there. Oh yeah, that's my Vax handheld by the way. I'll have to do a review on that at some time or other. My cordless handheld thing. Because my Black & Decker one burnt uh, that bit of the dust earlier this year, the battery stopped holding charge so I had to buy another one. Okay, let's just put the cable clamp back on now as well. This is better work <clears throat> after all this. belt and brush roll back on. Base trim back on. Which way does that go around? I don't think it really matters, does it? That one. I think that's how it goes. Or is it? Or does it? No, it must go that way around. I think that's how it goes. Well, it'll, it'll have to be readjusted afterwards if it doesn't. Or have I got it on upside down? Might have it on upside down. No, hang on, it does go that way, doesn't it? Do you know what? I can't remember which way around this trim went. It must be that way. Is. Right, I think that's it. We've got it back together. Now all I need to do is hope it works after all that. They don't generally like having the motors completely taken in bits like that, so let's see how it performs. The belt's off, remember. Sounds all right. Let's just put the belt on and see how it performs then.
suck my towel in there it was. There we go, that's fine. It sounds absolutely sweet that does, it was always a good cleaner before so um, I'm pleased that's, um, that's gone pretty well there. Let's just um, feed that cable down through a little bit more and uh, we can just wind the cable back on. So yeah, despite the fact I've done that a fair few times, removed the motor and brushes and all that, Doing it on a uh, when you're on a camera and then uh, you're up, up against the clock as well. It's a little bit more tricky. So we got there in the end. It really isn't as difficult as I was making out at times. There, once you've done it a few times, it's uh, it becomes easier. But uh, essentially, that's how you remove the motor and uh, get access to the the bearings in order to uh, oil them up so that your junior runs as sweet as a nut. But if the bearings are worn out, no amount of oil in them is going to help, and it only new bearings will do. So, until the next video, this is the end of part three of this one, and uh, I shall see you again very soon.